Now that Bruce Wayne has found a bigger calling, what's gonna happen next? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into the digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. This is in the main timeline, and it takes place in the first years of Bruce Wayne's return to Gotham. Bruce Wayne came back to the city of his birth, trained and ready to fight, only to meet with Red Hood 1 and his gang. After trying multiple avenues to defeat them, he realized he would need more. He would need to give them something to fear. In his beaten state, he saw something amazing. A cave and a bat. Some time passed with the Red Hood gang continuing their reign over Gotham, but on one of their jobs, one of the men turned around to find all of his friends tied up to a sign in the shape of a bat. Then Batman swaying and grabbing him, informing him that his bat still needs a head. He has been trying to stop as many of the Red Hood gang's jobs as he can, but he's still failing to see a pattern. They're stealing chemicals and trying to cover it up with other thefts so it can get drowned out. If only Bruce could see their endgame. So he decides to do something that he hasn't done since the Red Hood gang blew up his apartment and apparently killed Bruce Wayne. It's time to go talk to his uncle Philip. Philip has been running Wayne Enterprises with Bruce Wayne missing and is to blame for the Red Hood gang getting their hands on the Wayne Tech guns. Philip is overjoyed that Bruce is alive though. He never wanted this to happen and things are getting out of control and it's getting insane. So Bruce asks him for access to the system so that he can see what the Red Hood gang is doing and Philip willingly gives it up. After inviting Philip to come live at the manor for his own protection, Philip tells him no and Bruce went back to the cave that he discovered and has been building up. Alfred climbs down the ladder commenting that as long as there is a fire pole he can manage with the ladder, but Bruce reassures him that he'll build a cave entrance in the study soon. He begins looking through the Wayne Tech records and discovers one site that hasn't been touched and has everything that the Red Hood gang wants. Following the pattern that he's finally starting to figure out, he knows exactly what they are planning and when. Alfred tells him that he has to try and stop it. The facility is heavily guarded, but maybe Batman can. And Bruce stops him. I don't think Batman can handle this, but I know someone else who should. So Bruce decides to make a public statement claiming to have information on the Red Hood gang. The news outlets are all up in arms. First, they all thought that Bruce was dead. Then he came back. Then he supposedly died at another explosion. And now he's claiming that he has information on the Red Hood gang. He gives a speech about Gotham, what it is and what it means to everyone and what it means to him. That this city has been overrun by the gangs and by Red Hood telling everyone that their lives mean nothing. But the facility behind him, the Ace Chemicals facility, is the location of their next job. They intend to make a chemical cocktail, a radioactive poison that will eat someone's flesh and they want to explode the cocktail in different locations around the city. Gordon lets out a long drag from his cigarette at that news. He's been watching the reveal from the outskirts and he sees the Red Hood gang taking position in the facility. And they launch some rockets at the news crews and Bruce. He shouts, everyone get down! and everything explodes around them. With the fire burning, Bruce tells Alfred, it's time. Everyone begins to panic and run and the GCPD is trying to run into the building, but Bruce slips in ahead of them and he can see the rest of the Red Hood gang preparing. And he realizes that this whole building is one giant dirty bomb. That's when a gun is pointed at his head and Red Hood 1 tells him, how sweet it is that you threw us a party. Red Hood 1 has his gang lock the doors and keep the police out. He then shows Bruce the cocktail being loaded up into the trucks, getting ready to go. Bruce was dead on about their Plans. I'm honestly glad that you get to see this, Bruce. The circle that opened 15 years ago with your parents' death and it now closes with yours, here, tonight. Tomorrow, we will start over with a new night, a new Gotham. You're so full of shit. You don't stand for any truth at the heart of anything. You pretend you do, talking randomness of life and the meaningless. But it's all a sham. My parents' death might have been meaningless, but their lives were not. With a grin that you can even see under his mask, Red Hood 1 prepares to pull the trigger and kill Bruce. When the lights go out. No one knows what's going on. There are blocks with no power and the GCPD is asking everyone what is happening. It's the chopper overhead that tells everyone. The lights went out in the shape of a bat. In the darkness, the Red Hood gang puts on their night vision and they watch as Batman swings in grabbing Bruce Wayne and carrying him away. Then he gives the order. Now. Everyone wearing their night vision goggles gets blinded instantly as the lights all go back on and then Batman swoops back in to begin fighting against the gang while Red Hood 1 steps back and he takes his helmet off for his eyes to adjust. He throws his helmet back on and he tells everyone to finish loading the trucks. They are almost ready! Batman keeps dropping each and every one of them over and over until he is cornered at the top of the stairs. He then attaches his grappling line to one of the gang members and he rides him to the bottom of the stairs shouting, Yeehaw! He then retracts the gun, knocking down each and every one of the gang members on the stairs. While 
this is going on, Red Hood 1 lines up a shot. He has Batman dead to rights, and then a bullet ricochets off his helmet. It's one of his own gang members shooting at him, so he fires back at the gang member, shooting him in the stomach. Batman turns around and he shouts, NO! As the facility begins to go up in smoke around him with explosions. He runs up the stairs as the explosions knock Red Hood 1 down, and Gordon is finally able to get in as the door is blown open by the fire. Batman then kneels down by the side of the fallen gang member, bleeding out. He has a feeling that he knows who this is. Red Hood 1 blackmails normal individuals into joining their gang. Meanwhile, Red Hood 1 is shouting for everyone to grab what they can and get out of there. They need to move now. But his gang is telling him that the bay doors won't open. They won't respond. While Alfred sits at his computer, they are responding just fine. Batman pulls off the gang member's hood to see his Uncle Philip spitting up blood. He looks into his uncle's eyes, and Gordon shouts, FREEZE! Batman turns around to see Gordon with the GCPD demanding he surrender quietly, and he stands back up. You need to step back now. Ha! Is that so? Because Batman fires a gun loaded with a beanbag at Gordon, knocking him down just as a support beam hits the spot that he was standing. Then in the confusion, he makes a break for it as they open fire on him. He runs up to the roof where he sees Red Hood 1 making a break for a helicopter. So long, bats! But Batman isn't done as he sprints over the rooftop as it's crumbling beneath his feet, and he makes a leap for the ladder that Red Hood 1 is on. Now you idiot! You'll! Red Hood 1 shouts just as the ladder falls apart and they both begin to fall back down into the burning chemical facility. Batman tries to get to his feet in the confusion, calling Alfred to tell him that he's in bad shape, but Red Hood 1 cracks him over the back with a steel pipe. Then he comes down to stomp on Batman's head, and Batman grabs Red Hood's foot and throws him down. Both men stand on a crumbling bridge when one of the vats beneath them launches its top off, splitting the bridge in half, and Red Hood begins to slip. As he clings on, he turns to Batman. It's you under that hood! What isn't it, my little vigilante? My, how you've evolved. Batman calls to him. The railing won't hold. Give me your hand. And Red Hood coughs. <laughs> That's no fun. Come on, now it's over. Ha! Wouldn't you like to think so? See, it's only the beginning. The Red Hood tells him with a smile. He then lets go, smiling the whole way down. Batman shouts, but his call is lost to no one listening. Red Hood falls into the vat beneath him and the green chemicals begin to swallow him up. Some time passes and Alfred walks to a grandfather clock in the study that opens to the entrance to the Bat Cave. He walks down to Bruce sitting in front of a giant computer screen. Are you sure that it's large enough, sir? Batman doesn't do subtle, Alfred. No, I guess he doesn't, but he is clever. Such as looping an image of Batman swooping in to save Bruce Wayne on the Red Hood gang's stolen Wayne Tech night vision. That's the idea, at least. Bruce explains that no body was found for this Red Hood one, only his mask. Everyone in the gang gave up the name Liam Distill. So then Mr. Distill is still out there, crippled by his fall into, no, that's it. They found Liam Distill's body yesterday. It was shoved into a barrel of lye in an amusement park a mile out. Lie? Exactly. Lie dissolved the better part of his remains, meaning that there is no way to tell when he was killed or placed there. So you're saying that it's all a mystery, Alfred. We know for sure that at some point in the last year, someone murdered Distal and the original Red Hood leader took his place. But what we don't know is if the man I found in the factory was a patsy or the real Red Hood leader himself. Or, for all we know, someone swapped places with the imposter on the rooftop. We have no way of knowing. All that matters is that the Red Hood gang is defeated, right? But then, at that moment, someone comes over the television. Ahem, ahem. Hello, Gotham. Hello, you and you down there. My name, in case you were wondering, is Nigma. Edward Nigma, but you can call me the Riddler, and I'm here to make you smarter. It's my mission, my calling, my duty. Riddle me this, Gotham. There are two sisters. Each gives birth to the other. Who are they? No? I'll give you a hint. One sister says, I am the day, and the other one says, I am the dark, dark night. Then, the entire power grid goes out, and the whole city goes dark. Let the games begin, Gotham. And that is chapter two of the Zero Year. Now, Batman's going to have to deal with a little issue known as the Riddler. If you enjoyed this story, make sure you follow me on Twitter at ComicStorian or on Instagram at ComicStorian. And don't forget to check out our gaming channel where we bring you gaming comic books, some unnecessary censorships, and Let's Plays. I'll see you guys next time right here.